We're finally able to get in head coach Rick Roy from CBU men's basketball along with junior guard Tyrell. Gentlemen, can you hear me? Uh, yes, we can. Good. Happy to see both of you. How is everyone? Uh, we're doing well. We're just waiting for coach right now. Good. Uh, coach, I want to ask you a big role to be filled in guard Milan Aqua. Who do you anticipate helping to fill that role? Yeah, right here, Tyrell. He's got great experience in our program and, and also in the WAC and stepped into a, into a leadership role that he's more than ready for. You know, coming back off his ACL injury, he's done a great job with his recovery. And guys can't wait to compete with him. Ty, Coach mentions that ACL injury. You only played eight games last season before having to deal with that. How's the recovery process going? Uh, it's been going great. I'm back to 100%. And I, you know, I thank all the people around me that have, you know, helped me push me to that point. How tough was it having to deal with that recovery process during a pandemic? I would say it actually helped me out. It, you know, seasons pushed back a little bit, gave me a little more time to recover and get back to 100%. What exercises were you able to do? I'm sure you couldn't get into the gym for a while. Yeah, I was in my garage doing doing squats and lunges and that sort of thing. Like head coach Rick Croy. Fans want to know that non-conference slate. What can you tell us about it? Gosh, we're, we're just a few days away from putting it out there, but uh, we got some really exciting Pac-12 games. And then uh, we're going to have an opportunity to play in the CBU Event Center. We don't know exactly what the situation will be with attendance and uh, you know the ability to have fans at the games. But nonetheless, it's a, it's a great building to play in. I think we've got a great non-conference, uh, the majority of it being – you know, focused on the West region. Uh, we tried to make that a priority. And then obviously uh, it was really exciting last week for everyone to, or this, this week for everyone to see the WAC games schedule come out. So um, very excited uh, to be putting that out there in the next few days. Ty, if there are no fans allowed in the games, how do you and your teammates create that same energy? Uh, that's, that's one of our goals. We've been talking about it all, all fall. You know, that's, got to make sure we bring our own energy. Our bench has is, is got to be involved more than in past seasons, definitely. And how do you kind of shift to that leadership role to help those new players that are coming in? Uh, I've been working on that all fall, just building trust with my teammates and working with them. And, and it's, it's going to keep – it's going to be a process that we have to keep working out through the season, but I'm looking forward to it. Coach, the Lancers can now play in WAC Vegas. How much does that help with recruiting? Oh, it's been great. It's been great. And um, you know, I think it's, it's really something to look forward to as, as we try and improve throughout the season and, and know that we'll be in Vegas and have the opportunity to compete. So uh, it's been big in recruiting, but it's also big for these guys. You know, they, they want a chance to compete when it matters most. And uh, to have that opportunity is a special thing. How tough was it the past couple of years having to watch WAC Vegas go on and not being able to participate? Well, what was interesting was, there, you know, there's been so much enthusiasm and excitement about what we're doing here. Uh, we really didn't put too much attention on it, and we only missed one year. So, um, you know, we were in the thick of it our first year and had the opportunity to compete in the CBI. And then this past year, uh, you know, it was – I remember vividly, it was March 12th when we met in the locker room, and we have a lot of international guys and we started talking about what we needed to do. And we thought the first thing we needed to do was get those guys home and get them, get them on planes before, you know, travel was potentially shut down. So there was a lot of movement. Um, but again, it, it really means a lot to us that we get to compete in the tournament this year. On that same note, the schedule this year for conference play is back-to-back -back games Friday and Saturday night. How does that help going forward to WAC Vegas when you're playing back-to-back? Yeah, I think one of the things that, that we've talked about and, fan, and Ty alluded to it is, you know, things are going to be different from game to game, from, uh, you know, 5 p.m. tip-offs to 12 noon to back-to-back -back games. You might have a week gap in between games. Whatever it may be, um, it's on us to be ready to compete. And it's on our locker room and our brotherhood. And, and I think that's where this group has a chance to be great, is I don't think they're going to focus – on things that are outside our control. I think they're going to lock in as teammates and as competitors. And, you know, the back-to-back's part of that. You know, whether 
whether you have success that first night or that first game or, or you face some adversity, you got to turn right around and, and try and bring your best the next day. So I think we have a group that understands that and, and they'll pull together when things are tough. Ty, how easy is it to lock in with this Coach Croy's program? Oh, it's easy. It's, it's, we work on it in practice, you know, like we bring that competitiveness, bring that energy every day. So, you know, we, get, we got used to it. I'm now going to send it over to Chris Thompson for media questions. Thanks, Rachel. Okay, we will start off with uh, Kyle McDonald. Hi, it's Kyle McDonald with Wack Hoops Digest. I wanted to ask you, you know, last year you, you got injured. This year you have some pretty big shoes to fill as a floor leader. How have you mentally prepared yourself for that moment, you know, as you've gone through the recovery of an ACL injury as well? Uh, it definitely just had the peop right people around me. I've been meeting with Coach a lot, watching a lot of film on past players. You know, we've had Jordan Heading, a great leader, Milana Aqua, a great leader watching a lot of their film, talking to them, and just learning to try to be the best player I can be. Michael Navarrete. Yeah, Coach, uh, the Lancers added a couple of big transfers in the, in, to help in the paint in 6'10", Russell Barlow from TCU, and 6'11", Gojak Gak from Florida. Will that increase size down low, change your style of play at all? Um, yeah, you know, we – our front line guys did a great job last year. You know, Zach Parag had a, a tremendous senior season and, and Glenn Morrison was, was a count on player for us. And then obviously Dejon Davis being an all conference player. So I think that had a lot to do with our success and our defense and our rebounding. And I think this, this year's group um, has good depth in the front court and guys are improving. I mean, we're seeing Russ has had a really good week. Gorjok's been great since the first day he arrived. Um, We've got some freshmen that we think can have an impact. And as you know, I mean, there aren't that many freshmen that have an impact in our, in our conference. It's, it's kind of a, uh, an older laden conference and it takes a lot of experience to have success, but we got two guys, Tejon Sawyer uh, and Malik Wade that we think can both have an impact. So it's going to be fun, fun to see, you know, who really can produce um, night in and night out for us in the front court, but we definitely have good depth. Kyle. Ty, I wanted to ask you a couple of weeks ago when I talked to Coach Croy on the Wack Hoops Digest podcast, you know, we talked about you guys not being able to get in the CBU event center to practice at all. Everything was outside. You had your beach day. How has that brought you guys a little bit closer and how much fun was it to have a practice day at the beach? Oh, it was for sure fun. Um, we, I feel like going through adversity, I feel like you just get tighter as a team. So we went through a lot of adversity in that summer early fall and I feel like we've just grown you know our relationship with each other our trust with each other we've just gotten a lot stronger as a team uh, Ty your sister plays in the WAC as well but at Grand Canyon is there some sibling rivalry when it comes to game day when you're facing off against the Lopes even if you guys aren't facing off against each other uh, it's all love I, I cheer for every game I, I'm not a GCU men's basketball fan but in terms of the women's team, I do, I do hope that she, she plays well. Uh, Michael. Yeah, Coach, uh, we just added Dixie State and Tarleton to the, to the conference. You were a part of CBU's move from Division Two to Division One. What do you think those schools bring to the WAC? Well, I think they, they both bring commitment. You know, in Dixie State, we competed against in, in the Pac West, a very committed university athletic program, and – and men's basketball team. So uh, Coach Judkins' teams, they, they always get better throughout the season. They've been an incredibly consistent, competitive program. Uh, we've had great battles with them throughout the years. And then Coach Gillespie, I, I don't know a ton about their program specifically, but I've followed his career since I was a young coach, uh, incredibly accomplished, uh, tough leader, and I'm sure – they're going to play a great brand of basketball. But I think overall for the conference, it's two more teams that have put a tremendous emphasis on men's basketball. And that's great for the conference moving forward. It's, it's great for our conference tournament. It's just great for the overall brand of the WAC. And anytime you add two, two universities that are all in on athletics, all in on men's basketball, it makes everybody else better. Paul Coro. 
Uh, Coach, what's it uh, been like to add Jared Martin, uh, a former GCU basketball player, to your staff as a GA? Incredible addition for us. Um, he's been huge from the day he arrived. Great energy, great knowledge. And then also he, he's got a unique level of experience uh, having competed in the WAC. And then also, you know, he competed in a program that was going through this transition and, you know, went from uh, having a chance to, you know, they weren't able to play in the WAC tournament. Then they were, they're trying to capture those moments. Um, won a ton of basketball games at GCU and he's going to be a great head coach one day. And, and uh, we're proud that he's a Lancer now. Uh, you were a freshman on CBU's last Division II team that made the Elite Eight and have played on CBU's first two Division I squads as well. From a player's perspective, what has the transition been like? Uh, it's been a great experience. Uh, I've been on like, some great teams going through every year. Um, and I feel like we've made some great steps every year, and I feel like this year is going to be a great one. Al McDonald. Rick, we talked about this on the podcast episode we talked about, but you don't have a, I, I would say, a superstar, you know, player right now like Milan was that everybody focused their attention on. How how does that help your team that you have a bunch of different guys that are going to contribute? Because you said you, it's about bringing in the right guys, not just the best guys. How do these guys that you brought in, along with Ty, fit the system that you want to run this year? Well, you know, I think if you look at the strength on our, of our team right now, it, it, it lies in, in the versatility and then the versatility within each player. I think if you went down, you broke, you know, you did a, a real breakdown of the guys on our team. Every single guy on our team has the ability to make somebody else better uh, with their play, uh, with their approach. And that's, and that, that's a really important thing for our program. You know, you take a guy like Gorjock Gack coming from Florida, uh, Gorjok's, you know, his, his best box score, he's got stats everywhere, rebounds, assists, uh, points. He can score in a couple different ways. And I think that's emblematic and representative of a number of guys on our team. I think they all have a chance to impact the game in different ways. And, and our goal is to be competitively great, you know, to be really solid defensively, compete hard on the glass, and then offensively, we're going to do it together. And, and the guys are all in on that, and they're excited about the challenge. Uh, Michael, go ahead. Yeah, Ty, with uh, how the offseason has gone and how your own individual offseason went, uh, it seems like this first game just can't fa come fast enough. How, how anxious are you to get on the court and compete against somebody that's not wearing a California Baptist jersey? I'm super excited. You know, it's working for it's what I've been working for to get back to full health but uh right now you know for the next couple of weeks we're worried about uh ourselves just getting to be the best team that we can be so yeah. hey CBU head coach Rick Croy uh guard Ty Grau um guys thank you for joining us today appreciate it thank you guys thank you